centered about what the situation in Khartoum, but also, and some of you have again mentioned it, what is happening in the rest of the country. Darfur is one, the two, the two areas, um, but also other states where we see uh, in some instances uh, instance of incidents of violence and as, as a result the absolute implementation of the Juba peace agreement is critical. Um, including the national protection of civilians, uh, the implementation of the national protection of civilians strategy. Um, indeed, what we can build on is this cooperation that my office has, my designated expert has, uh, that the human rights system has on, on the way forward. And, and that's a very important uh, building block to work further on as, as we go forward and as we, trans as we accompany the transition that that Sudan is going through. As I said, transitions are never easy. Uh, we also need to think about the day after, and we need to be prepared for it, including on the part of the international community to support whatever goes forward, and again, in r really fulfilling the aspirations of, of the people of Sudan. Thank you. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, High Commissioner, Excellencies. Uh, in addition to what the High Commissioner has mentioned in terms of positive developments in Sudan, in addition also to the fact that there is a, a very positive interaction between the authorities and the Office of the High Commissioner and they have also very much facilitated my mission in the country. I would like to add just a few points. For example, mention that there are ongoing efforts to prevent and resolve intercommunal conflicts in Sudan. During my visit, the Attorney General assured that the Office of the High Commissioner will be allowed to follow up with the judiciary on human rights uh, related cases. Most importantly, the uh, conferences or the workshops uh, that, have been, that have been discussing some of the outstanding issues of the political framework agreement, these are the Juba peace agreement, the dismantling of the former regime, and the situation and development in eastern Sudan. These workshops or conferences have been organized with the wide participation of people from a variety of horizons, including non-signatories of the political framework agreement. There were women, youth, farmers, herders, IDP representatives, civil society representatives, academia, and many others. These consultations have produced a series of good recommendations. Indeed, some of these recommendations are quite ambitious, perhaps requiring time and resources, but they represent a good ground for the future. The Sudanese authorities often claim that in the lack of resources and in the absence of a legislative body, uh, they are not in a position to introduce all the changes to improve the human rights conditions in the country. I believe, however, that there are many concrete actions that can be taken nearly at no cost, and that, uh, which would build trust between the Sudanese people and the state institutions. The High Commission has mentioned many of these, such as banning impunity and ensuring accountability, widening the civic space, 
and facilitating the work of humanitarian organizations and of civil society uh, entities, publicly announcing a zero tolerance policy towards sexual violence, uh, publicly condemning the hate speech, middle age practices such as death by stoning or amputation are, do, are to be abolished without further delay, issuing clear instructions to the security forces to stop the use of uh, excessive force against protesters, speed up the deployment of security officers that have been trained as part of the national plan for the protection of civilians. His Excellency, the Minister of Justice, informed yesterday that this deployment has already started, particularly in the Darfur regions, lifting the immunity of uh, police and security officers when they are suspected of violations of human rights, pay more attention to the IDPs, uh, get closer to them, listen to them, consult them and associate them in the design of future plans. These actions do not require much funding, and they do not require a legislative body, and they do not need to wait for a civilian government. They simply require good political will from the authorities and a, a genuine desire to build confidence between the population and their institutions. Mr. President, my conclusion, conclusion having met with uh, and spoken to a wide range of stakeholders, is that at this challenging time, what is needed from all sides in Sudan is to put aside their uh, personal feuds, interests, and ambitions to remain engaged, realistic, but perseverant with one objective in mind, and that is to pull Sudan back from the brink with expressions of goodwill and con commitment to dialogue it should, it should be possible to build a future Sudan. Mr. President, High Commissioner, I, I remain at your service uh, and the service of the Council and look forward to our collective and continued engagement in relation to this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This brings us to the end of the interactive dialogue. I wish to thank the High Commissioner and the designated expert on the Sudan for their participation in this dialogue. We will now take a short break before the interactive dialogue on the High Commissioner's report on the occupied Palestinian territory. Your Excellency. Thank you, Mr. President, and I thank you to all the countries and the organizations for the efforts and efforts that have been made in this discussion. The participation in the General Conference. The events that happened in the Nile 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 is a result of the previous conversation in the Nile Nile and the Nile 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 الأولى لتقديم المساعدات الإنسانية وإجراء المصالحات بين القبائل المتنازعة والثانية لتقصي الحقائق والتحقيق والتحري لتقديم الجناه للمحاكمة العادلة فيما يتعلق بالإحصائيات للقتلى بعدد 441 أعتقد أن هذه المعلومة غير صحيحة ومستقاة من مصادر غير معلومة لدينا خالصا وهذا ما ظللنا نشكو منه أن يعني الآليات وآليات الأمم المت... حقوق الإنسان الموجودة في السودان تستقي معلوماتها بدون 
التشاور معنا السودان بلد متعدد الأديان وهنالك حرية كاملة لأي شخص لاعتناق الدين الذي يريد ولا يوجد حجرة على ممارسة الشعائر الدينية لأي طائفة من الطوائف وبحكم إني وزير للعد لم يصلني ما يفيد بأن هنالك كنيسة قد هدمت أو مسجد قد أحرق أو يعني أرض قد نزعت أضيف إلى ذلك وأستغرب لما يغال عنه يعني اختصاب جماعي لا يوجد ما يسمى من أين هذه المعلومات أدعو الأخوة الذين أساروا هذه النقاط بزيارة السودان للتثبت والتحقق وأنا على استعداد تام على دفع على دفع كافة نفقاتهم وتكاليفهم رقم ظروفنا ورقم يعني قياب المجتمع الدولي قياب المجتمع الدولي من مسؤولياته الأخلاقية تجاه الشعب السوداني والظروف التي يمر بها أدعو هؤلاء الذين يدعون بأن هنالك اقتصاب وهنالك أدعوهم لزيارة السودان على نفقتي لكي يتأكدوا و أختم حديثي بأنه يا أخواننا ليس هنالك أقول للأخوة في المجلس قوات الشرطة هي التي تتابع المظاهرات وتنظمها ليس هنالك يعني قوات من من القوات المسلحة أو الجيش أو الدعم السريع أو قوات المخابرات تتابع ذلك ونحن نراقب هذه المظاهرات نراقب هذه المظاهرات من النيابة ومن وزارة العدل حتى العساكر الذين أو أفراد الشرطة الذين يتابعون هذه المظاهرات نحن نجرد نجرد حتى أسلحتهم من الزخيرة ومثل ما تساءل الأخوة أيضا أنا أتساءل لماذا لا يأتي المجتمع الدولي ويعرف معنا من الذين من الذين يقتلون هؤلاء المتظاهرين فليساعدنا المجتمع الدولي لكي نجد ونقف على من يقتل هؤلاء المتظاهرين وشكرا جزيلا Thank you, thank you excellencies um, I did not want to interrupt because it's the honorable minister of the member state concerned speaking but normally the procedure we don't take the floor at the end of the interactive dialogue but we appreciate your intervention just for future references we thank you now and we will now take a short break before the interactive dialogue on the High Commissioner's report on the occupied Palestinian territory. We thank you everyone.
I think the Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellences, Excellences, we would like to return. Excellences, I'm calling for order so that we can get back to the session. Excellences, distinguished participants, we will now proceed with the interactive dialogue on the High Commissioner's report on the human rights situation in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem, and the obligation to ensure accountability and justice submitted pursuant to Council Resolution 49-4. It is my honor to welcome Mr. Volker Turk, High Commissioner for Human Rights, to present his report. The list of speakers will close in 15 minutes. High Commissioner, you have the floor. Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, the situation in the occupied Palestinian territory is a tragedy. A tragedy above all for the Palestinian people. Over half a century of occupation has led to widening dispossession, deepening deprivation, and recurring and severe violations of their rights, including the right to life. Nobody could wish to live this way or imagine that forcing people on con into conditions of such desperation can lead to an enduring solution. The people of Israel also suffer from this situation, insecurity, pain, loss, and fear. They have a right to live in peace in their state, just as Palestinians do in a state that is finally recognized and viable. But the current intensif intensification of violence on all sides makes that prospect seem very distant. 2022 saw both the highest number of Palestinians killed by Israeli security forces in the past 17 years and the highest number of Israelis killed since 2016. This death toll has further and sharply deteriorated in the first weeks of 2023 and in the month that has just ended. On Sunday night, Two Israeli brothers, aged 19 and 21 years old, were killed by a Palestinian in the West Bank town of Huwara. Hours later, hundreds of Israeli settlers rioted across the area. One Palestinian man was shot dead, and two others were shot and wounded. A third person was stabbed, and a fourth badly beaten. Palestinian homes, shops, and dozens of vehicles were set on fire or damaged. The Palestinian Red Crescent said 390 people were wounded in the rampage. Three ambulances were attacked. The attack was strongly condemned by the President of Israel, who called it, and I quote, criminal violence against innocence, which harms us as a moral society and a lawful country. Yet the finance minister publicly called for the town of Huwara to be wiped out an unfathomable statement of incitement to violence and hostility. Mr. President, increasing violence is condemning innocent people on all sides to further tragedy in a terrible, self-sustaining logic, or rather illogic, 
of confrontation. My report, A stroke, HRC stroke 52 stroke 75, finds that over the reporting period, lethal force has been frequently employed by the Israeli security forces, regardless of the level of threat, and at times even as an initial measure, rather than as last resort. My office has also documented several cases of apparent extrajudicial targeted killings by members of the ISF. The report finds that 131 Palestinians were killed by ISF personnel over the past year in a context of law enforcement that is outside any context of hostilities. This includes 65 people who we understand were not armed nor engaged in any attacks or clashes. Since 2017, fewer than 15% of such killings have been investigated and fewer than 1% led to an indictment. 13 Israelis were killed by Palestinians during the period covered by this report. Nine, uh, nine Israelis, including three children and a foreign national, have been killed in two attacks since then. Collective punishments, which are prohibited by international law, are increasingly imposed on Palestinians by Israel. The blockade of Gaza, which restricts two million people to that territory, has been in effect for 16 years. Currently, 967 Palestinians are being held in what is termed administrative detention, in which people are arbitrarily detained for often lengthy periods without charge or trial. This is the highest number in 15 years. Unlawful killings, use of force and torture and ill treatment by the Palestinian security forces also meet with impunity. The same is true of the Gaza de facto authorities. More than 270 Israeli settlements encroach on and fragment Palestine. The separation wall divides thousands of Palestinians from each other and their lands. It constitutes a major obstacle to their freedom of movement, including impairing access to health care, schools and employment. And it imposes a suffocating straitjacket on their lives. Lethal force has repeatedly been employed, been employed against Palestinian workers attempting to cross the wall into Israel. During the reporting period, two men were shot and killed, and 35 were shot and injured by Israeli security forces in these circumstances. Mr. President, decade upon decade of loss and violence, violence against the occupation, violence to uphold and, in, and enforce it, I condemn the violence that has killed and harmed so many people on both sides, and which generates overwhelming despair. On both sides, there is, I believe, a growing sense of a narrowing future in which nobody can even hope for peace and security for anyone's children. The occupation is eating away at the health of both societies on every level, from childhood to old age and in every part of life. For this violence to end, the occupation must end. On all sides, there are people who know this. It is my fervent conviction that the human rights cause, which unifies us and brings us back to what is human, can be the impetus for changing course towards peace and security for everyone. I urge decision makers and people on all sides to give effect to the recommendations of our reports and to step back from the precipice to which increasing extremism and violence have led. I would like to highlight some of the recurring recommendations from the human rights system that would make an immediate difference. Take steps to ensure that ISF actions in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, operate within the boundaries set by international human rights law for law enforcement operations. Treat all cases of violence equally. The law is not law if it applies only to one side. 
There must be genuine accountability for all acts of unlawful violence as a first essential step towards greater calm. The lethal mob violence in Huwara on Sunday and the two murders that preceded it. All sides should adhere completely to the spirit and wording of the agreement reached at the summit in Aqaba on 26 February and build on this experience and op of opening the issues to regional solutions to, sol to resolve other issues in the future. Prevent or, when they occur, investigate and prosecute abuses at checkpoints. End the blockade of Gaza. Ease instead of tighten restrictions to improve people's lives and allow them to breathe. And tug young people, indeed people of every age and political opinion, away from further violence and extremism and the illusion that this represents any solution. Steps such as, those, such as these are rooted in the reporting and monitoring of my office. They could immediately help to lessen the violence instead of the current sharply escalating trajectory towards much worse. Member States should play a role in assisting all parties to find the exit ramp. In the near future, there must be an end to settlements in occupied land. And within a foreseeable horizon, there must be a two-state solution with an end to the occupation and mutual recognition of the legitimate rights of all Israelis and Palestinians to live in dignity, peace and security. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you so much, Mr. High Commissioner. According to our practice, we shall start by hearing from the delegations of the countries concerned. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Israel. You have five minutes. I note that the delegation of Israel is not present in the room. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the State of Palestine. You have five minutes. Shukran Sayyid Naib al-Rais. Bidayatan awadda natawajjah bishukri li Sayyid al-Mufawad al-Sami wa maktabihi ala a'dad hadha al-takrir wa lathi tamma arduhu wa bishaklin jayyid ala al-majlis ma mulahadatina adam al-tawazun indama yata'arrad al-takrir li Israel bisifatiha kuwatin qayma bil-ihtilal wa dawlat filistin التي تقع تحت الاحتلال الاستيطاني الاستعماري والذي يشكل منظومة أبرتايد وفصل عنصري لقد رصد التقرير بعض الانتهاكات التي قامت بها قوات الاحتلال حتى نهاية شهر أكتوبر من العام الماضي وبحسب بيانات وزارة الصحة الفلسطينية فإن عدد الشهداء الفلسطينيين العام الماضي وصل إلى 224 وهناك الكثير من الانتهاكات الجسيمة في المجالات المختلفة والتي اطلعتم عليها في التقرير والتي قامت بها حكومة الاحتلال السابقة سيد الرئيس منذ تسلم حكومة الاحتلال الجديدة مهامها بزعامة نتنياهو والتي تضم عدد من القتلة والمجرمين والتي بدأت بتصعيد جديد للشعب الفلسطيني والأسرى داخل السجون والاعتداء على المساجد والكنائس واقتحام المسجد الأقصى من قبل الإرهاب بن جفير يوم 6 يناير إضافة إلى اتخاذ إجراءات عقابية ضد الشعب الفلسطيني والقيادة والمجتمع المدني بسبب قرار الجمعية العامة بطلب رأي استشاري من محكمة العدل الدولية حول ماهية الاحتلال طويل الأمد إضافة إلى موافقة الكنيسة على قوانين عنصرية منها سحب الجنسية والإقامات وكذلك الموافقة بالقراءة الأولى لقانون إعدام الأسرى الفلسطينيين والموافقة على تشريع تسع بؤر استيطانية جديدة كل ذلك تزامن مع الاجتياحات لمخيم جنين ونابلس وقتل العشرات من المدنيين الفلسطينيين بما فيهم الأطفال والنساء فقد بلغ عدد الشهداء منذ بداية هذا العام حتى اليوم 66 منهم 17 طفلا 
وقد تابعتم ما حصل يوم الأحد الماضي من اعتداء وعربدة المستوطنين في قرية حوارة من حرق للمنازل وتدمير للممتلكات والاعتداء على المواطنين وبحماية جيش الاحتلال وتابعتم تصريح لوزير المالية الإرهاب سموتريتش والذي طالب بإبادة قرية حوارة وسكانها والبعض لازال يصف إسرائيل بأنها بلد ديمقراطي سيد الرئيس على مدار الأسبوع استمعنا لكلمات العديد من المسؤولين الأمميين وممثلي الدول حيث تعرضوا إلى أوضاع حقوق الإنسان في عديد من دول العالم ومناطق الصراع ولم يتطرق معظمهم إلى ذكر الجريمة القانونية والإنسانية التي ترتكب بحق الشعب الفلسطيني هل هذا خوف من إسرائيل ومن لوبياتها المختلفة وكيف يطالب العديد من المتحدثين بضرورة تعزيز عمل لجان تقصي الحقائق وإعمال مبدأ المحاسبة والمساءلة وعندما يأتي الأمر إلى إسرائيل نرى موقفا مغايرا فيوم أمس تحدث السيد بلينكين عن كل هذا وعن عالمية حقوق الإنسان وبدون خجل هاجم لجنة تقصي الحقائق المكلفة من مجلسكم الموقر بالتحقيق في كافة الانتهاكات في فلسطين وإسرائيل وهاجم مرة أخرى البند السابع الذي يستفرد بإسرائيل حسب ادعائه ولم يتطرق إلى الأعمال الوحشية التي ترتكب على يد حكومة القتلة وميليشيات المستوطنين منذ العام الحالي والمؤسف أيضا أننا تابعنا إدانات من عدد من الدول والمسؤولين للعمليات الإرهابية كما تم توصيفها ضد المستوطنين والإشارة الخجولة إلى مقتل المدنيين الفلسطينيين نتيجة العنف إن هذه التصريحات التمييزية تعتبر إهانة للقيم الأخلاقية والإنسانية والقانونية وتشكل تحريضا على معاداة السامية في العالم الأمر الذي نرفضه ونطالب الجميع التعامل مع الضحايا حسب القانون ونحن مع المساءلة والمحاسبة لكل منتهكي القانون في العالم ولا يجوز إطلاقا استثناء إسرائيل القوة القائمة بالاحتلال والتي تقودها الحركة الصهيونية التي أخطأت الجمعية العامة بإلغاء قرارها باعتبارها حركة عنصرية فالشواهد ماثلة أمامكم لهذا فإننا نطالب المجتمع الدولي وكل الهيئات والمنظمات الدولية والدول الأطراف السامية اتخاذ خطوات عقابية حسب ما هو وارد في اتفاقية جنيف الرابعة ونطالب مقاطعة القوة القامة بالاحتلال ومستوطناتها ومستوطنيها وقياداتها وحكومة القتل والفاشية وعدم التعاون معهم فإسرائيل هي المنتهك الأول لميثاق الأمم المتحدة منذ أن تم الأثر I now invite interested delegations to ask questions to the High Commissioner and to make comments on the report. I give the floor to the distinguished delegation of Qatar on behalf of the group of Arab states. Sayyid al-Rais, I would like to thank you for the name of the Arab Union. اطلعت المجموعة العربية على التقرير المقدم من قبل المفوض السامي وتعرب عن بالغ القلق حيال الاستمرار في رسم صورة الأطراف المتساوية في الالتزامات والواجبات بين إسرائيل القوة القائمة بالاحتلال والدولة المحتلة في التقارير وندين رفض إسرائيل التعاون مع مكتب المفوض السامي لحقوق الإنسان وآليات المجلس منذ تشكيل الحكومة الإسرائيلية المتطرفة الحالية سعت سلطات الاحتلال إلى تصعيد اعتداءاتها العسكرية على المدن الفلسطينية مرتكبة انتهاكات جسيمة وجراء محرب وضد الإنسانية وفصل عنصري وواصلت سن قوانين تمييزية وإعلانات عشوائية لتوسيع المستوطنات الاستعمارية غير القانونية في فلسطين المحتلة في انتهاك صارخ للقوانين والاتفاقات الدولية 
وقامت إسرائيل منذ بداية العام الحالي بقتل 67 فلسطينيا واعتقال ما لا يقل عن 1000 فلسطيني وهدم 58 منزلا وارتكب مستوطنوها أكثر من 330 هجوم إرهابي كجزء من سياسة منهجية لإيذاء الفلسطينيين السيد الرئيس أن مكافحة الإفلات من العقاب يجب أن يكون محط إجماع الدول كافة وبهذا الخصوص ندعو المجتمع الدولي والدول الأطراف السامية في اتفاقية جنيف الرابعة تحمل المسؤولية واتخاذ جميع الإجراءات اللازمة لضمان تحقيق المساءلة والعدالة في جميع الانتهاكات والجرائم التي ترتكب بحق الشعب الفلسطيني وإنهاء الاحتلال الإسرائيلي الاستعماري العنصري شكرا السيد الرئيس Thank you. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the European Union. Thank you. The European Union remains concerned by the human rights situation in the occupied Palestinian territory. We are concerned about the increasingly high number of ca civilian casualties as a result of actions in Teralia by Israeli security forces. The use of force must be proportionate when unavoidable to protect life. The EU reiterates its fundamental commitment to Israel's security, strongly condemns terror attack, and we as well as indiscriminate launching of rockets. We reiterate our strong opposition to Israel's settlement policy, including in East Jerusalem, and we call on Israel to halt settlement expansion, regularization of outposts, evictions, demolitions, and forced transfers. The EU firmly condemns settler violence and calls for prevention and accountability. We reiterate the need to ensure the safety of civilians and their protection. We welcome the Aqaba communique and call on both parties to implement their commitments. The EU is proud of its continued support to civil society. It is crucial to ensure that anti-terrorism legislation does not lead to undermine it. The EU reiterates its support for human rights defenders and journalists. The right to freedom of expression must be upheld, including in areas under PA control. We strongly condemn the execution of prisoners in Gaza and recall our opposition to capital punishment. The EU calls on all parties to take necessary steps to bring about a fundamental change in the Gaza Strip. We call on Israel to reverse its publicly stated freeze in relation with the office, including in relation with visas. The EU strongly supports the UNSC presidential statements and urges all parties to fully adhere to it. I thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Oman on behalf of the Gulf Cooperation Council. السيد الرئيس يسرني أن ألقي هذا البيان نيابة عن دول مجلس التعاون لدول الخليج العربية تعرب دول مجلس التعاون عن امتنانها للمفوضية السامية لحقوق الإنسان لتقديمها تقييما شاملا لحالة حقوق الإنسان في الأراضي الفلسطينية المحتلة وتسليطها الضوء على انتهاكات حقوق الإنسان المستمرة في الأراضي المحتلة ومدى الالتزام بموجب ضمان المسالة وتحقيق العدالة وتعبر دول مجلس التعاون عن قلقها البالغ إذا الوضع الوضع على الأرض والذي يستمر في التدهور مع عدم وجود علامات على وقف التصعيد وتأسف لما يبرزه تقرير من غياب تام لأي محاسبة أو مساءلة للمسؤولين عن انتهاكات بحق المدنيين الفلسطينيين والانتهاكات العديدة لحقوق الإنسان التي تركبها قوات الاحتلال بما في ذلك استخدام القوة المفرطة ضد الفلسطينيين والعقاب الجماعي لسكان غزة وتوسيع المستوطنات وهدم منازل الفلسطينيين وممتلكاتهم السيد الرئيس تؤكد دول مجلس التعاون على رفضها التام لكافة الانتهاكات المنهجية التي ترتكبها قوات الاحتلال الإسرائيلي وتعتبرها انتهاكا صارخا للقانون الإنساني الدولي والقانون الدولي لحقوق الإنسان وتدعو إسرائيل إلى الوفاء بالتزاماتها بموجب القانون الدولي واحترام حقوق الإنسان لجميع الفلسطينيين وتعبر دول مجلس المجلس في الختام في الختام عن وقوفها الى جانب الشعب الفلسطيني في سعيه لتحقيق العداله كما تجدد التاكيد على موقفها الراسخ تجاه القضيه الفلسطينيه باعتبارها القضيه الاولى للعرب والمسلمين وعن دعمها الثابت لاقامه الدوله الفلسطينيه المستقله ضمن حدود عام 1967 وعاصمتها القدس الشرقيه وفق مبادره السلام العربيه وقرارات الشرعيه الدوليه وشكرا سيد الرئيس Thank you. I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Pakistan on behalf of the OIC. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. The OIC takes note of the High Commissioner's report.